Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm going to tell you about a new standard or protocol that I think is poised to really change the industry of home automation and the internet of things. Now this information was available to my patrons over on Patreon and I want to thank those people again. They've had access to lots of this information for a couple of months now and you can have the same. I'll leave a link down below and up in the top left right now that allows you to go ahead and have a look. You don't have to sign up but for a small fee you can get access to this and more information, more detailed information. Now what is Thread? So Thread is a smart home internet of things protocol or standard that there are a few devices throughout your home that I'll get to here but it has been essentially developed early on by Nest who was acquired by Google and since that time you know Samsung was involved at that time as well and as of late Amazon and Apple have joined into what's called the thread group so these companies along with now hundreds of companies are all part of the thread group that have created and are there to basically manage the standard going forward as well as promote the usage of thread devices some of the basics of thread these are networks, so they're a mesh network as well. So very similar to Z-Wave and Zigbee, how they're mesh networks, which means you can have multiple devices that are relaying information back from one to the next, and then to, in this case, what is called the end router for a thread network. So you will have heard of hubs on Z-Wave and Zigbee, but now they're called end routers or border routers on a thread network. All of the thread network devices are transmitting and receiving at the 2.4 gigahertz uh, frequency there. So that's the carrier frequency that they're using. There's also an option around that 900 megahertz frequency, but we won't talk about that here in this video. It's not really a, a primary usage, but it's at 2.4 gigahertz, which is the same as Zigbee, but very different than what Z-Wave does. And some of your Wi-Fi now, it, it can go to five gigahertz, but a lot of your Wi-Fi is still at that 2.4, as well as Bluetooth at that 2.4 gigahertz. Another one of the basics here is a relatively higher data transfer rate so it's at 250 kilobits per second is what's kind of stated as the maximum data transfer rate now that's as high as Zigbee and it's higher than Z-Wave so it's about double there's 110 kilobits bits per second expectation out of Z-Wave. Now that is things that can be adjusted by different device types but one of the things of Thread is that it kind of has a lower data rate built into it so it has a 20 and a 40 kilobits per second uh, data rate type that lowers power or consumption of power as it does that so that's one of the nice scalable features of thread it can actually be scaled back to save on power usage in terms of range of transmission between devices thread is expected to have as much of a range as z-wave products so that's around that hundred foot range and that actually around triples what is expected out of Z Zigbee. In terms of the maximum number of devices, you know, we hear numbers like 65,000 for Zigbee and we hear the, you know, the Z-Wave maximum is around 232 or is 232. Now there are methods around those maximums for Z-Wave and what I'll tell you is that Nest is telling us that Thread is capable of 511 devices on an end router or a border router, but that you can then go and get additional end or border routers up to 32 of them and then get that 511 back again for your home network. So we're talking in the 16,000 device range there. I think that's enough for most people on one thread network. Now there's one differentiator and I'm going to struggle getting everything right in this section guys. So, uh, you know, ask questions as necessary, but 
Thread is IP based, and that's a differentiator from you know Z-Wave and Zigbee. They're native state, okay? There's a Zigbee over IP option, and you know you're always going to be able to work around this with the solutions that are out on the market today for both of those protocols. Wi-Fi devices have an IP base, or they have an IP address, and so do your Thread devices. Now, what this means in terms of the creation of devices and and really for programmers and device manufacturers the IP basis means that they don't have to create specific application layers or specific application transport layers are called to go out to Wi-Fi and to go out to cellular communication networks. So you have this border router that sits on the edge of your Wi-Fi network at home. This is how most people would have it. So you have a border router and that border router can communicate very easily with a Wi-Fi router or a Wi-Fi network or just an IP based network. You can also then very easily with the same software essentially communicate to a cellular network and Nest has implemented this in what's called the Nest Guard. Now why does that matter? Well the application transport layer as explained by many videos that I've watched actually uh, and specifically by Nest what they actually said was that that application transport layer can be a uh, failure point for a lot of manufacturers and it can be a struggle and what that means is they've essentially removed this requirement for them by having the protocol based on IP addresses. Now why do you care as the you know the homeowner you don't care if there's a little extra software but it actually what it allows to happen for you as the consumer is less latency in terms of communication between your devices so it can be more efficient than some of the other protocols in terms of its transport between Wi-Fi and cellular network. It also means that in general you're going to see better reliability between your thread network to Wi-Fi or to cellular communications. And what I'll say is, you know, when you look at the Nest Protect devices and their interconnect feature, so they're using thread to go between the two Nest Protect devices or three or four or however many you have in your home, they're not utilizing Wi-Fi to give that interconnection signal across. So what's, what's so important or what you should take from that is that interconnection signal is sometimes regulated. In a lot of countries, it's regulated in your home that devices are interconnected when they're a smoke or a CO detector so that when one alarms all of them alarm so the fact that they're utilizing thread for that says to me that it is very secure it is very reliable and it is more reliable than say Wi-Fi signals. Now we talked a little bit about scalability, but what's interesting within that scalability is how resilient the network becomes with multiple thread and routers in your home or, or in your network and how it becomes a resilient network. So one of the features of thread is that it will identify devices that can become end routers and make your network more efficient in terms of how it communicates. So if you have a device that could be an end router and is just acting as an end device right now, it can actually start that device as an end router and then utilize it for transport of information across the mesh network. On the flip side, if that same device or any end router device becomes kind of a problem for the network or it's starting to slow things down, it can actually be removed and turned back into an end device. So, and, and that will go on as you lose devices from the network. So say a battery runs out in one of your thread end devices, say a sensor dies, then and, and suddenly you don't need this other end router, it can turn that into an end device and it will automatically make those adjustments for you. So that's incredibly powerful and it allows ultimate efficiency through essentially learning. As compared to Wi-Fi, 
Thread has about a tenth of the power consumption when communicating, so that's very important. But what's also really interesting about this is those end devices, similar to what you see with Zigbee and Z-Wave, is they're not always communicating, they're not always maintaining a connection. Now, what that does for you is it allows devices to live on batteries for years, and we're already seeing that with some of the Nest devices. Now, one other little tidbit about that, so asynchronous communication, or basically not having to maintain a, a network connection all the time. Each device can wake another device up to cause communication to happen on a thread network and you know this is similar to some of the other networks and I'll talk about Zigbee a little bit here and it will paint a little bit of a picture for you for the, what could be the future and we'll talk about this more as we go forward on the channel but a Zigbee device has the right chip on it, an 802.15.4 capable chip. And that's what Thread uses as well, 802.15.4 as its basis. Now the difference between the two of them is there's a defined application layer and some other things, but there's a defined application layer in Zigbee and there's not in a Thread device. So we'll talk about that again in future videos. But what that means is, those devices are already actually capable of communicating thread or via thread. So what that means to you as the consumer is not only are Zigbee devices ready, but they could be adjusted uh, in a number of ways, either on the fly or they could be used as dual purpose devices on Thread and Zigbee networks, depending on the chip. In terms of security for a Thread network, Nest is talking about a very, very secure system. Basically, they're, they've secured every side of it, as far as I can see. It's going to be very difficult. I mean, you know, software is always changing and, and people are always creating new methods to attack networks, but it is very secure as far as I'm concerned at this point in time uh, in terms of networks. Now, what I'll say is number one, there's no way to deploy an unsecured thread network. That is not necessarily the case. Uh, not saying a lot of the good manufacturers will ever do that in any other protocol or standard, but there is no way to deploy an unsecured thread network. One of the reasons for that is actually your smartphone has to create a secure connection with your end router. So there's actually some communication that goes on there and there is a secured connection going on between your smartphone and your end router on a thread network. On top of that, in order to add a device, you need a QR code put through that smartphone, which is secured in terms of its communication with that end router. It has to be input. That QR code is required for essentially what is called commissioning of your smart home device. In terms of products already in your home, this is a very interesting discussion and something we're going to talk about in future videos, but obviously a lot of Nest's devices already have Thread on board. And what's nice about what they're doing now uh, is called Open Thread, and so it's essentially open source and it allows manufacturers to build off of that. So that's an incredible capability and an incredible opportunity for a lot of manufacturers to go and create a thread capable device. Now, the uh, one of the best examples I think of all of this or all of this capability is the devices from Nest. So the Nest Guard is an end router and it is capable of managing a thread network of up to 511 end devices. Now a Nest Detect is a great example of an end device. Same with the Nest Yale Lock. It's a, it's a great example of an end device that is on a thread network already being managed by that thread end router. Now let me show you with that Nest Guard how the implementation of thread matters. 
So what they've been able to do with that device is if you lose power, it switches to battery mode and continues to manage the thread network, but it goes into essentially a low power state. It can wake any of the devices as necessary and it begins to communicate over the cellular network. So if you lose power or Wi-Fi in your home, the device switches and essentially can still be accessed through your smartphone. This makes as well the Nest Yale Lock, so another example of a thread device, very, very secure. So you have to go through that end router to get to that Nest Yale Lock and then you're authenticated and on the thread network and then you can open up the deadbolt. Otherwise, if you're not on that thread network, you're not going to be able to open that lock. So it gives you that extra layer of capability and your smartphone would have to get on that network. So for a hacker to essentially authenticate and get into the Nest Guard to say open a Nest Yale lock is going to be a very difficult exercise because of all of the different ways that you have to authenticate uh, a device or even a smartphone to go ahead and get access to that network. So I think for today's video, this is where I'm going to leave it. I've been considering how to deploy all of these. And you know what? I, I think this is a good take on thread. I think it gives you a good understanding or a good basis. And obviously there's going to be questions. There's a lot of misinformation out there as well. I'll say you can go read a lot of articles out there and they're just wrong. I've read a lot of them and as you get into the actual details that come out from Nest and Google, uh, you will get a more clear understanding of where they're headed and how this is going to really change things. So thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time with more details on Thread.